What's up guys, Devil Doll Gamer here. Today we are trying out the new entry into the flight sim genre, Flight Sim World. Um, now, Flight Sim World is from Dovetail, the makers of Train Simulator. They've also made a flight school game which got pretty bad reviews in the past. Um, and this is, this game's coming out is kind of special as in it, it's 64-bit uh, and DirectX 11 because a lot of the flight simulators, the FSX, are very outdated engines, old, and, you know, there's very few game, flight sim games that are pushing to use today's hardware, basically. Uh, X-Plane 11 is a good example of using today's hardware, and you can achieve some amazing things. Prepared 3D is also working on version 4, 64-bit, um, and DirectX 11 also. So it's kind of pushing more towards the newer hardware, better performance, away from that 30 FPS with all your stuff and get more to 60 FPS. Um, because, you know, they've been using a lot of the old engines and it's just been for a very long time flight simmers have dealt with very low FPS because you're not utilizing today's hardware. Um, but, you know, Dovetail Games is trying to change that with Flight Sim World. So this is one of the big three. Um, flight Sim World is, you know, we got X-Plane 11, Prepare 3D, and now Flight Sim World's trying to come in and you know, set themselves up as number three in the flight sim market. Um, now this is released in early access, I think at $25, which is comparably cheaper than, you know, your other options. Prepared 3D goes for anywhere from $60 to $200. Uh, X-Plane 11, I think, is on sale right now, but I think it was $60 when I first got it. Um, so this comes in very cheap-wise. And um, there's a few things I really do enjoy about this, I think, that are awesome. First of all, you have a pilot profile which will log your hours you do through all your training, certificates, skill tests uh, for light aircraft, pilot, pilot, uh, you know, missions, all kinds of really cool stuff. I think that's cool, having like a tracking system put in to track your progress and everything like that. Um, not only that, you got flight training, you can go to different flight schools around here. There's free flight, online multiplayer, of course you're going to have add-ons and DLC, you got the cart there, it is a dovetail game. So, of course, you're going to have some sort of uh, some DLC, but that's the big thing. See, the success of a flight sim is built on if the third-party makers move to your flight, flight sim. Um, a lot of us in the flight sim community have pretty much spent hundreds of dollars on add-ons, making them what we want them to be. And that's the big appeal to flight sim, is that you can customize it and create it to be amazing. If, whether you want to do airliners, um, GA aircraft, VFR, IFR, you have the ability and there are the products out there to make it what you want. X-Plane 11 is kind of one of those that are kind of cursed by it a little bit. Um, a lot of the makers stay with FSX. P3D is also kind of an offshoot of FSX, so a lot of the add-ons do work for it, but X-Plane 11 is completely different, so a lot of those companies have to make them compatible. Now they're slowly starting to move to X-Plane 11, so now you're slowly getting more add-ons to X-Plane 11, but the life and death struggle of this game, Flight Sim World, depends on if the add-on makers actually do work with them. But there is a glimmer of hope. The scenery for this game is FTX Global Base. Um, that is a huge add-on in our market, and for them to start working with Flight Sim World shows that they're already starting to get somewhere around. Along with the aircraft in the game, I believe our A2A aircraft, which are another big makers of aircraft. So it looks like people are starting to get their foot in the door from the get-go, but life and death struggle, you know, depends on add-ons. You can't just have this as a base game. Um, but, they, you know, so far, some pretty cool features. I do like the features. Um, but we're going to hop in game, and I'm going to talk about the stuff I don't like about this. All right, so when you select a free flight, this is the screen it gets you to. Basically, the entire world, go around, figure it out. Wow, there's shit in Alaska. Holy crap. What do we got down here in Alaska? These are probably stations. Um... Tons and tons of airports, and if you sc scroll in, you should unlock more and more airports. Stuff like that. Uh, I think we're going to go up into the UK. I don't do a lot of UK flying. Let's go to Biggin Hill. We'll start there. And then from here, you can actually plan your flight. But, there's not a lot. There's VORs, you know, but it's very, very lacking. You don't have a lot of the waypoints. It's just... I like the feature, but at the same time, I don't. And I guess we'll fly to uh, Rochester. How does that sound? Okay, there we go. Um, I think that's a cool feature, honestly. So we're going to back out of that. Uh, now we need to select our aircraft, which 
Let's take out a Malibu Mirage. From here, you can configure your aircraft, fuel payload, stuff like that. I think that's pretty cool. Weather conditions. You can't configure how you start on the airport yet. It's kind of a bummer to me. Let's go uh, fair weather. You can do visibility, wind speed, wind direction, time, season. A lot of really cool things. Now the biggest issue, the loading time. The loading time is exceptionally ridiculous. We're talking about 10 minutes for me to get in. Now, before we get into it, my hardware is pretty fucking good. Uh, SLI 980s, uh, i7 4790 overclocked to 5 gigahertz. I, I, my computer is not lacking whatsoever. I can pull off 60 frames per second X-Plane 11. I can pull off above 40 to 50 with P3D with a fuck ton of add-ons. Like, I'm talking hundreds of add-ons. At least almost 100 gigs of add-ons. So, when we start talking about what was going to happen next, keep that in mind that I can run pretty much everything completely well and you're going to see some problems. So I'm going to hit the start button and we're going to have to come back 10 minutes later. All right, so we are in. Now, here's an issue I have. Prior to starting this flight, I was getting 15 FPS and that's on high settings. Starting this flight, I'm now holding at a solid 30. This game definitely still needs some optimization because I was prepared for 15 FPS, basically. Um, of course, the aircraft look fantastic. I have no problems with them. Big issue, though, there is no zoom button, zoom slider, nothing. So I, it's very hard for me to get in and see anything in there. And, of course, none of this seems to work. Fantastic. What about this? Yeah, okay. Well, we got some stuff working here. Everything else is still very much lacking. Um, Optimization is still pretty crap. Um, now, if you go out, a lot of it's still, you know, even though it's the Orbix region, it's still, I mean, the trees are shit. It's just, it's lacking. It's just lacking in so many ways. All right, let's, let's take off. We'll take off and we'll talk a little bit about it. I, I honestly cannot believe I'm getting over 30 FPS. Whoa. Alright, we're gonna lift here. And we're gonna get gear up. Alright, so we're lifting and as you can see over there, you can see some buildings and stuff like that. You anyway, know, we definitely have torque, that's for sure. Um, one thing, the clouds. The clouds I'm not too impressed with. After using Active Sky for so long, not a big fan of these clouds whatsoever. Uh, if you look over there, you can see the edge of the autogen. Um, this is an issue with flight sims in general, and this is an issue with an outdated engine. Um, from what I've heard, and I, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, this flight sim, flight sim world, uses the same engine as FSX, but it's only up, it's just been updated to 64-bit and DirectX 11. So how you see the, no trees and just blurriness and a few buildings over there at, I think it's a six mile radius, is because of the outdated engine. To me, that's just a big cop out. This was a big complaint just in general for the flight sim community, especially when we're trying to get into the future and using hardware. I know we can get stuff out there. I know we have the hardware capabilities to do that. The hardware is there. But as you can see, the scenery is Orbix, so it's not too bad, but the trees, you know, it doesn't look like they're using HD trees, which is kind of annoying. It's there, but everything's overly bright. Everything's kind of seems washed out almost. But you can see it better here, which is the lack of scenery in the distance. How do the planes handle? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a cross between X-Plane 11 and FSX. It's not the best handling. It doesn't feel the most realistic. But the response is pretty good. Um, and then we're coming in with no VR support also, which is kind of... 
you know, this day and age, you need to have VR support. X-Plane 11 doesn't have it. There are, you know, third-party software that do have it. Um, but, I mean, if you're making a game in 2017, especially a simulator, you gotta have VR support. Like, that, that needs to be on a roadmap somewhere. Um, but yeah, the, the optimization right now is utter garbage. I think that's issue number one with this game. Issue number one, optimization's garbage. Um, I, I'm not impressed. I'm really not impressed. I mean, look at the water down there. I mean, the water itself is just shit. And for some reason, I'm in a left roll. I don't know why. I know there's not enough torque for me to be doing it. And there's definitely not a lot of torque. Let me see if I can trim her. Oh, okay. Oh, guess we're going to hand fly and correct that. I mean, the, pr the price point's there. I, I feel like if you're maybe somebody that wants to get into simming or flight sim, this definitely shouldn't be your first start, to be completely honest. There's no airliners. There's no option to get third-party aircraft. This should not be your start into the flight sim community. The price point's there to try to get people in, but I feel like this shouldn't be your start at all. There, it's lacking on so many ways. And it feels like a fucking step backwards. I feel like we're walking backwards into the in flight simming. I mean that, that crap where you see nothingness over there. This is 2017, man. Like this, this shouldn't be happening whatsoever. I'm not a fan of this at all. Um, I don't know. I feel like we're taking a step backwards. Um, dovetails definitely. I mean, these are guys to be doing sims. I, I, I say, you know, they, they really should be making simulators. I'm not going to hate on the future of this game, but at this moment, I'm not very impressed with it whatsoever. I feel like we're, re we're really going to need some work, to be honest, on this. I mean, the roadway, the roadways down there look like garbage, too. The trees, the trees are pretty bad. Optimization is definitely not here whatsoever. There, there is no optimization in this game. Like I said... I literally started it once, 15 FPS, started again for this, 30 FPS. That's a huge jump, double the FPS just from a restart of a game. That's, and I'm pretty sure if I start it again, I'll get 15 FPS. And the other problem is, you only have the option to play on full screen or windowed. There is no borderless window, which is like, really, come on, nowadays, no borderless window. Um, but they have the option for multi-monitor support. Now, the thing is, I don't have multi-monitors turned on, even though I have triple monitors. But because of that, when I start the game, it overrides my other monitors, and it drops the FPS to 6. So it still took control of my other monitors, even though I told it not to. And for me to completely get around 6 FPS, I had to restart the game, unplug my other monitors, and play it with a single monitor. Um, that, that shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't have it take control of your other monitors when you only have it to set for a single monitor. Especially with that much of a FPS drop. And the clouds, dude. I can't get over how crappy the clouds are. I really just feel like this is an updated FSX. With a, little, with a few bells and whistles like Orbex Global. To make it look different. In an add-on aircraft. But it still feels like the same old engine. To give you any idea... Default FSX right now, you could easily get 60, 60 FPS. Easily. Default. Now, we're playing default FSX world at 35 FPS. 30, 30 if I look over this way. Um, but it's technically not default. It has an A2A aircraft and Orbex Global. But I guarantee if I, if I loaded up FSX with Orbex Global, I could easily get 50 FPS. And if I threw in an A2A aircraft on there, I'm pretty sure I could get 50, 40 FPS. Probably around 40 with an A2A. Um, so to me, it still feels like a step backwards. That you could get better performance in a freaking ancient game than you could in this this one, which is supposedly new at 2017. To me, this is laziness. I, I, I feel like there was a massive... Whoa, okay. This came out in early access too, too early. And, and then this is another thing with early access. So let's take Daisy for an example. You push a game out well before it's ready because you need funding for it, you will pay the price. You will pay the price. People do not want unfinished garbage. It sets a bad taste in their mouth 
and they won't touch it again. I bought Daisy standalone the second it came out in early access. Do I play it anymore? No. Has it maybe improved? Probably. Will I play it? No, because it put a bad taste in my mouth. I feel like this is happening with Flight Sim World, except they did it to the wrong damn community. The Flight Sim community does not give a shit. Like, they, they're not going to be like, oh, it's early access. They're going to be like, what is this garbage? Uninstall. This is not the community to be doing this to. And I feel like they've made a terrible miscalculation. So Dovetail, you burned them once to flight school, and now you, you now you early access Flight Sim World, which is just basically a FSX, a shitty FSX port. Fantastic. You've, you've pretty much lost the credibility of the Flight Sim community. Am I gonna give this a fighting chance? Yeah, more than likely, you know, I, I you. Wait, there are only so many options for flight simming. Um, and now there's a third, so I'm gonna give it a flying chance. I'm not a big fan of X.11, I still play it from time to time, because I give it a, f a fighting chance. Um, but I feel like this put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. So, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what the priorities are for development of this. Because it's it really needs some work. It definitely does. I And I'm going to tell you now. Am I, am I telling you to get it? Absolutely not. Do not get this in this state whatsoever. Um, if you're looking for a flight sim, X-Plane 11 or P3D, to be completely honest. Um, this and this state at the moment, no. This needs a ton of work. All right, let me get a gear out and get some flaps down. Where are my flaps on this I don't, I don't ever use this aircraft. There we go. There we go. Yeah, the torque, and, torque is definitely there. But it feels hit or miss when it comes in. I don't know, man. I'm just kind of tired of early access games. And I feel like an early access sim is, is not only dangerous but bold and ballsy at the same time because simulator fans don't have time to deal with half features and shit like that. They want to get in and experience the whole product. And, um, and that's why I agree with P3Ds. Uh, you know, they don't, even though you have to buy each version, you know each version's going to be polished. There's going to be very few bugs and that the companies are going to update their shit over time for each version. So I have to give P3D that. Um, but this, this is, I don't know. I, I, I honestly feel like this is a step backwards and I'm not too impressed, but you never know, especially with no airliners. Like who, who does that? Who releases a flight sim without airliners or any sort of jet aircraft? There's not even a damn Cessna in this. Oh, I'm floating. There we go. Oh, I forgot. Oh shit. What? Why did I bounce that hard? What the hell? What did I hit? Also, I don't have brakes bound, so... Why, why am I bouncing that hard? Yeah, I didn't bind my brakes, so... Sorry, boys. What the hell? Oh, we really... Are we rolling downhill? <laughs> oh, look! Look, it's the default FSX crash. Default FSX crash picture. All right, so my final verdict on this is just pass. Pass for right now. It needs a lot of work. It's just an updated version of FSX with a few bells and whistles. And uh, it's pretty disappointing, to be completely honest. I feel like a huge step backwards. Um, one of the cool things, though, I want to show you is the ATC. A lot of people have been complaining about it. But let's let's do this real quick. I'm going to tune to ground. ground. Piper. It's got a remote, it's got a robot voice. So it's got a weird robot -y voice, but each ATC has a different voice, which is kind of cool. I do like that. I feel like that's that's cool. Because my big complaint about X-Plane 11 is the shitty ATC. So it's good to kind of see a semi-decent ATC, but at the same time, it doesn't make up for the, the rest of the crap. 
Um, definitely pass on this for right now, guys. Um, this is not a flight sim that you really want to get into at this moment. But you never know what the future holds. Anyways, boys, you want to see some more of this? I hope not. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.